The Lower Columbia Estuary Partnership has been working on Horsetail Creek for over a decade. Here's an overview of what has been happening on this unique site and what is planned for the future. I'm Chris Collins with the Lower Columbia Estuary Partnership. I'm a restoration ecologist and I was a project manager for the phase one of the work we completed at the Horsetail site. Phase one occurred in 2013. We partnered with the primary landowner, uh, the Forest Service, but also ODOT who owns the Interstate 84 corridor. The project was funded by Bonneville Power Administration, OWEB, East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District, and ODOT. The Horsetail site is about 190 acres of Columbia River floodplain. It's located just downstream of Bonneville Dam. And the major impact to the site was the construction of Interstate 84. When that occurred, the site's uh, two creeks, Oneonta Creek and Horsetail Creek, were rerouted and a large gravel pit was excavated uh, within the flow path of Oneonta Creek. They actually diverted Oneonta Creek through that flow path. So the impacts of this and the limiting factors that we addressed are, number one, is impacts to the thermal regime. The diversion of Oneonta Creek through the uh, gravel pond results in about a two week detention time during the summer, which greatly warms the temperatures of that stream, impacting temperatures at the outlet. Uh, the uh, second uh, limiting factor would be uh, passage into the site, and that has both a physical component, which is primarily passage through the culvert, but also uh, a, a section of Oneonta that is dewatered. And then the third impact it's just overall habitat quality at the site. Uh, when the site was rerouted, uh, no attention was given to the, the habitat quality of the new stream channels. So it's really uh, largely bereft of things like overhanging vegetation and large wave debris. We address these limiting factors. Uh, number one, the thermal regime by restoring Oneonta Creek's historic alignment, which primarily involved uh, filling a gravel pond and rerouting the creek directly to the Columbia River as it had been before. Um, we also planted about 30 acres of trees, focusing those along the two creeks alignments. The second way we address the limiting factors is for passage. We retrofitted the culvert that carries both creeks below Interstate 84, making it uh, much more passable to both adult and juvenile sumonids, um, also lamprey. We also, by restoring that Oneonta Creek alignment, we eliminated the dewatered section of creek and we addressed the thermal barrier that sets up in a portion of the site during the summertime. And the last thing we did was, of course, improve habitat quality. We placed about 600 pieces of large wood. And then, of course, the plantings also had a beneficial effect for providing overhanging vegetation and future sources of woody debris. To assess the effects of the project on the site, water quality monitoring was conducted by the Estuary Partnership. To determine the effectiveness of restoration activities, water temperature data was collected between June to September of 2014 to 2019. Three restoration temperature monitoring at the site was conducted between June to September of 2010. Fish access was also monitored using a pit tag array between late March to early November of 2014 to 2019. Comparison of pre and post restoration temperatures show an increase in semo temperatures at the site, the highest temperatures usually being observed in August every year. The maximum increase from pre restoration temperature was observed in 2015, while minimum increase in temperature was observed in 2016. These increased temperatures are in line with increases observed in local climatological data for the monitoring time period. Our monitoring study also showed that the site temperatures are cooler than that of the mainstem Columbia River. ESA listed juvenile and adult salmon access the site throughout the post-restoration period. Chinook salmon were the most numerous species detected of juvenile fish, while coho were the most numerous species detected of adults, originating from as far as the Yakima Basin. One third of salmon that were detected as juveniles were then detected again as adults during August of September when river temperatures tended to be the highest. 
This indicates that adults may be using the site as a cold water refuge during their upstream migration. After completion of the initial project on Horsetail Creek, we are using monitoring results to guide additional restoration actions at the site. Hi, my name is Jenny and I'm here at Horsetail Floodplain to tell you a little bit about the Phase 2 restoration project. Phase 2 added an additional 30 acres to the east of the site, including riparian, floodplain, and upland habitats. Some of those upland habitats were even affected by the Eagle Creek 2017 fire. The goals of the Phase 2 project include improving off-channel habitats for threatened juvenile salmon and steelhead that use the area when high flows from the Columbia backwater into the floodplain. It's also to transition riparian and floodplain habitats from invasive reed canary grass to a native diverse vegetation habitat. To achieve these goals, we're implementing several restoration actions, including placing 30 large trees into the riparian and floodplain areas to improve fish habitat, and we are planting 30 acres with over 60,000 native trees and shrubs. This will be followed up by three years of invasive species maintenance to make sure those new trees and shrubs are surviving well. To help protect salmon from rising water temperatures brought on by climate change, a third project is currently in the planning process. As you can see from the story map, the Lower Columbia Estuary Partnership, Forest Service, and our partners have worked over the past 10 years to restore the Horsetail Creek floodplain site, including the site's historic thermal regime. Our hope is that by reducing the temperatures in the creeks by one to two degrees centigrade will provide not only benefits to the cold water species like salmon and lamprey that use the site itself, but also to many of the salmon and steelhead that migrate up and down the main stem Columbia River during the warm summer months when temperatures often exceed 21 or 22 degrees centigrade. During this time, when temperatures are that high, adult and often juvenile salmonids will look for off-channel areas that are cooler than the main stem, and we call these cold water refuges. These cold water refuges often take the form of small tributaries like horsetail, eagle, or other small creeks in the gorge. Adult fish, in particular, will stop off and use these areas often for weeks at a time, giving themselves a break from the warm temperatures in the main stem Columbia, which are stressful during July, August, and early September. Now that we're nearing completion of restoration work within the horsetail site itself, we're shifting our focus out to the main stem Columbia River, specifically to the location where Horsetail Creek discharges into the Columbia River. Immediately surrounding that confluence zone, our next phase of work will involve regrading that area so that Horsetail Creek discharges into a calm, quiet zone that's protected by a linear habitat feature. Our hope is that by allowing Horsetail to discharge into that area, it will allow the creek's cool water to coalesce at a point where it will be detected by migrating salmon. Our hope is that if adult and juvenile salmon and steelhead can detect this cool water area, they'll stop over and use it during their migrations. We're still in the early phases of design for this project, but please do stay tuned. We hope to have it constructed in a couple years and then also to have some monitoring results to share that'll show exactly how effective this project was in providing a cold water refuge for salmon and steelhead migrating during the warm summer months. The Columbia River is warm now, and it's projected to get much warmer as climate change continues to reshape our landscape. So we envision projects like this and cold water refuges as being increasingly important in allowing summer migrating salmon and steelhead to continue being successful and to persist in those runs. So the next time you're enjoying the waterfalls in the Columbia River Gorge or just driving through on I-84, think about the critical habitat that's there and what is being done to protect and enhance it. If you want to stay updated on the Horsetail Project, check out the Estuary Partnerships website and follow us on social media. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to the partners and funders who make this project possible.